Pollinators such as bees, birds, butterflies, bats, and insects play a crucial role in the production of most fruits and vegetables. They also support healthy ecosystems that clean the air, stabilize soils, and support wildlife. Studies show that pollinator populations are in decline because of a loss of feeding and nesting habitats, pollution, and the misuse of pesticides. A University of Missouri Extension program, the Master Pollinator Steward course, engages learners by teaching how to protect our agricultural economy and food supply and appreciate the diversity of the arthropod world. Hi, I'm Tamara Rial. I'm a field specialist in horticulture with the MU Extension, and I'm pleased to share the Master Pollinator Steward program with you. The premise of this course is to truly help pollinators, people should first learn about who the pollinators are, what their needs are, and how they interact with their environment. We found that a lot of people think that in order to help pollinators, they need to get a beehive and keep honeybees. There are a lot of steps between an awakening to the plight of pollinator decline and becoming a beekeeper. This program created by MU Extension in collaboration with beekeepers and educators bridges that gap. By the end of the course, participants have the tools they need, be it connections to local beekeeping organizations or additional education programs to help the pollinators in their yard, farm, or orchard. To make sure we're on the same page about why this program was created and who the audience is, it's important to note that the mission of extension is just one of the pillars of a land grant university. Beginning with the Morrill Act in 1862 and followed by the Hatch Act, the Morrill Act too, and finally the Smith-Lever Act in 1914, the Cooperative Education Service was established to inform people about the research happening at the university with the benefit of improving lives and the economy. So extension makes the university available to all people. Other MU extension programs I work with include the Extension Master Gardeners and Missouri Master Naturalists. Extension Master Gardener or EMG program is about helping others learn to grow by providing in-depth horticulture training to individuals throughout Missouri. These individuals volunteer their time applying what they have learned to help others in their communities to learn about gardening and environmental education. The Missouri Master Naturalist Program is a community-based natural resource education and volunteer service program. It is co-sponsored by the Missouri Department of Conservation and the University of Missouri Extension. Its purpose is to develop a core of well-informed volunteers to provide education, outreach, and service dedicated to the beneficial management of natural resources and natural areas within their communities for the state of Missouri. In an effort to prepare the future volunteers for the work they will do in their communities, these two programs are wide ranging and broadly cover entomology. An environmental awareness and conservation program without a volunteer requirement makes this important information available to more people to help meet our educational mission. The Master Pollinator Steward course is divided into five modules. We start with an insect overview, focusing on pollinators and frequently encountered insects. Then we talk about the relationships between plants and pollinators, introduce honeybees and beekeeping issues, we focus on native pollinators, and then we bring it all together as we talk about pollinators in nature and agriculture. Each module has a live or recorded presentation, a supplementary reading, a learning activity, a quiz, and a way to ask questions. Let's look at each of these modules a little more closely. As I mentioned, we start with the basic entomology section, focusing on the orders that are pollinators, and we address some general garden pests. Many people taking this class are extension master gardeners or master naturalists, so they may have had a basic class on insects. Others attending this course, though, are affiliated with beekeeping clubs throughout the state. We also have people taking this course who have never been involved in an extension program before and just want to learn more. There are also folks who are teachers who want to learn the tools to help their students be better environmental stewards. In this insect module, we first explore why insects are important and why they are studied. For most people I meet when I mention that I'm an entomologist and that I study insects, the reaction is shock or it's, hey, can you tell me what this is and how do I kill it? Most people's conscious experiences with insects are negative, so we first share the beneficial nature of insects. Did you know that less than 1% of insects are pests? The rest are beneficial or neutral. Once we have established the positive nature of insects, we explore the diversity of insects from a taxonomic perspective, as well as talk about the many ways insects are beneficial in the world, even beyond pollination. We talk about pest insects too, including invasive insects, and then we focus on insect ecology. We also introduce integrated pest management or IPM principles, so that when folks come across problems, they're equipped to recognize what is going on and how to manage problems in an environmentally friendly way. 
This second module explores the relationship between plants and pollinators. We teach basic botany and how pollination works. We explore the pollinator taxonomic groups more closely too. And we look at how these insects are intimately connected to the flowers they visit. Understanding the how and why of flower blooms, as well as what is attracted to specific plants, helps course participants understand what they might consider putting into their garden or their field. Learning about the seasonality of plant needs also helps participants understand why diversity is important. Diversity in plant species is necessary to provide food sources as well as better nutrition for the diverse species of pollinators throughout the year. Our third module is about honeybees and beekeeping. I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation that the course designers found that a lot of people felt that in order to help pollinators, they needed to become a beekeeper. This honeybee module is equivalent to a very basic introduction to a beekeeping course. In fact, this course has been certified with the Great Plains Master Beekeeping Program as meeting some of the requirements folks can attend to become master beekeepers. We start with the history of beekeeping and then move into the physical characteristics and life cycle of honeybees. We discuss their natural habitat, needs, communication, and pollination. Then we explore how humans have domesticated bees in order to benefit from the various bee products produced, such as honey, pollen, and propolis. While bees used to be kept primarily for their honey and other products, they are now worth more as pollinators than as honey producers. As with all good things, there are challenges too. Keeping bees also comes with many problems, such as colony collapse disorder, which is really a combination of many different issues, mites, bacterial infections, fungi, parasitic insects, and wild animals are but a few. And with the Asian giant hornet reaching the USA, we are really hoping that the entomologists in Washington state are able to eradicate these wasps so that this is not yet another obstacle. We strongly encourage those who are interested in keeping bees to get involved with their local beekeeping club. For those who decide they don't really wanna be a beekeeper after learning how much work is involved in keeping bees rather than having bees, we let them know how they can still help the bees. Of course, honeybees aren't the only pollinators, far from it. Native solitary bees, bumblebees, butterflies, moths, flies, and other insects, as well as birds and bats are also discussed in this course. In this module, we talk about these other pollinators in more depth, what they need and how to help. A favorite part of this class for me is sharing how important flies are in pollination. While butterflies and bees are the poster children for pollination, Flies are second in importance to bees as pollinators from what we know now. Many people in the class comment on how this is a shocking piece of information. Class participants are also impressed with the Batesian mimicry of many pollinating bees. For example, what's shown on this slide is a fly, not a bee. Of course, we also talk about reducing pesticides and what to do when pollinators are pests. Another favorite part of the class is when we talk about community science projects that participants can get involved in. We talk about pollinator gardens and documenting plant usefulness. A community science project we recommend is the Great Sunflower Project. This is where people plant lemon queen sunflowers in their yards, gardens, schools, and parks. They watch their plants and count the number and kinds of pollinators that visit these plants. This community science project has been collecting information about pollinators since 2008 and with over 100,000 members is considered the largest community science project focused on pollinators. This is another community science project, the Missouri Bumblebee Atlas. This one is a statewide community science project aimed at tracking and conserving our native bumblebees. Many states have a bumblebee atlas project of their own. So if you're not in Missouri, you can still participate. There is an in-depth training that will teach you about bumblebees and how to participate in the atlas. Anyone with an interest in supporting pollinators is encouraged to join. No experience is necessary to participate in the atlas. Our final module is with pollinators in nature and agriculture. This class brings the whole course together and explores the so what part of the course. We don't have to convince the course participants why pollinator conservation is important. After all, they signed up for the course, but this section gives more depth to the argument for why those in agriculture should care and what they can do to help. We share tools that they can use to make a difference. We talk about what is a keystone species and food webs and how this applies to pollinators. We talk about the threats to pollinators in agriculture and how pollination affects crop security. We also discuss native bee diversity in agriculture and how they contribute to crop pollination. Did you know that more than 80 bee species were recorded visiting berry crops in New England and over 100 species were documented in Wisconsin cranberries? 
And while 100 plus species visited apples in New York and Pennsylvania, more than 50 species visited tomatoes, sunflowers, and watermelon in California. From a crop security perspective, it is essential to diversify the ecological services of pollination and pollinators. Additionally, we talk about the threats to monarchs, including loss of milkweed and habitat, pesticide use, and climate change. We don't want to leave them too discouraged, so we also talk about what they can do. They can plant milkweed. We introduce them to Missouri's for monarchs and talk about the solar scorecard we created to supplement recently passed legislation in Missouri for wildflower plantings in solar energy sites. Again, we talk about ways to get involved and ways to make a difference. We introduce participants to the Xerces Society and how to be a community monitor for species such as the rusty patched bumblebee. We give a big picture of what is happening on an international, national, and statewide scale. Then we talk about what can be done on individual farms, orchards, or a backyard garden. In urban areas, such as Kansas City, where I'm located, we focus on pollinator-friendly lawns as a way to increase forage areas for pollinators. So that's it, the Master Pollinator Steward Program in a nutshell. This course was originally designed to be taught as an in-person class. However, as with many things, the need for virtual education opportunities led me with the help of ME Extension to move this course to an online format. With the assistance of some colleagues, we pre-recorded presentations so people could participate asynchronously, but we also wanted to give people the chance to connect with others. So we added a live question and answer session for each module. This course was also recently taught in a blended format of virtual presentations and outdoor lab experiences. Moving forward, we'll offer this program locally, in person and virtually. We'll also be offering this course to anyone who wants to participate, whether in Missouri or elsewhere. If you are interested in learning more about this course, please scan the QR code or go to the website listed on the slide or in the description, and you'll find a lot more about this course. If you don't see this course offered locally, you can contact your local extension specialist and request it, or you can watch on the extension course pages to see when it is offered virtually. You are also welcome to contact me for more information as well. I put my information on this slide so that you can know how to reach me. My email address is there, also my social media handles, that's on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. I also have a specific page for Master Pollinator Steward on Facebook. I hope I've sparked your interest in this course. It really is a fantastic course. We've had a lot of very good reviews of it. Of course, we're constantly learning, constantly improving. I hope that we get to see you in this course as well. Take care.